Welcome everyone to the webinar, how to generate revenue with your IoT devices. Uh, this is one of the events that we are organizing in the program Smart City and IoT at Startup Bootcamp Amsterdam. Startup Bootcamp is an organization that helps corporates to innovate and helps startups and scale-ups to scale up. My name is Manuela Krul. I'm the managing director of the Smart City and IoT program. And my special guest today is Simon Hunnaker, CEO of Naimia. Simon, can you tell a little bit more about yourself, please? Hi, yeah. Welcome, everyone. It's nice to talk to you, to have you here. I'm the CEO and one of the four founders of an IoT company in Austria. Um, I have five years of experience now in the IoT sector, and I'm happy to tell you some of my experiences. So your biggest uh, achievement, uh, I almost would say, is this beautiful company, Naimia. Maybe you can give us a little bit of uh, background. What is the history of your company? Uh, where are you based? Who are your team members? Sure. So we are now 15 team members. Uh, the company is based in beautiful Vienna, <laughs> just ranked uh, the most livable city in. Um, people are working from five countries. Uh, it's it's very tech-savvy team. Maybe you can choose the next slide. Uh, so since since two years, we are on the market, 2016, but altogether, the founders started in the IoT space in the year 2013. Very specialized embedded systems architect, so always had a huge focus on the product side. And step by step we gained some good partners and clients uh, like startup bootcamp it's make a lot of sense for us to help startups as well most of our tech is open source and it makes fun uh, to innovate in new products uh, maybe you can go to the next slide yeah uh, so i was just saying so it's very good to see that you're uh, you're two years in this space and you have already built a growing network of partners uh, and you even got an award, right? Well, this happened recently. Uh, so Austria likes to see a lot of exports because it's a little country. And we had been named the Born Global Champion, which is an award basically for exporting a lot of stuff. Yeah, yeah that's fantastic that you already got this award. And uh, as you were saying, you have a growing team of 15 people. Uh, mm -hmm. Your board is, uh, uh, consists of, can you explain a little bit? Sure. So on the, the left side, the four guys, these are the founders, uh, tech found every, every, the background of everyone is tech. And on the right side, we have also the CFO and the CMO, uh, very experienced guys worked in, in various industries before and two on the right, right lower side, bottom side, these are well-known guys on the tech side as well. Well-known guys in the IoT space because they have, worked in Canonical and Ubuntu and also Nokia and this stuff. So a very cool foundation, I would say. Yeah, very important to have a good team where you can build on with all the experiences. Uh, let us go over a bit more into the product and services of my Namia. Uh, you told me, I asked you, what is your vision? And you told me we want to be the IoT standard in the market. Can you explain what is it? What do you mean by that? Uh, well, yeah, there are a lot of standards in the IoT space uh, and depending on which kind of product groups we, we're talking about, I think for consumer-oriented uh, products, there will be something like Android uh, for the phone because if you do a smartphone, you would never consider doing an OS on your own. And for the IoT space, I'm pretty sure that in the next years, uh, an IoT operating system like turnkey solution for very modern software design products will be the standard, the market standard, because it's easy to go. So what you're saying is you don't have an application where you can do uh, full, uh, uh, a lot of uh, nice things with, but you really have an operating system in order to manage a device. That is really interesting. Let us go to your uh, products and services a little bit more into detail. So you told me you have three offerings. Can you explain a little bit? 
Sure. So on the very left side, it's about the NIMEA, the core part and the huge differentiator that we have. So it's an operating system uh, from the kernel up to the application layer, if you want. So everything is done for a proper IoT device. The main goal, uh, I will talk about it later, is to host a lot of applications on the edge side, on the product itself, like on the smartphone, right? Uh, the NIMEA cloud is uh, cloud services that support that goal. So it's meant to uh, control the devices, uh, but much more it's a huge app application management stack. Uh, similar to that on the phone, like an app store of the smartphone, uh, but with a little difference code. We can install new application on customers' devices. So that's the scope of our cloud. And the third part is a very important part too. We have uh, an app code base and we can white label apps very quickly, fast and beautiful because the, the end user app is always a very nice door to customer attention. So it's a, we can have a, a interaction and communication with the end customer through this kind of apps. So if I may summarize in short and in simple terms, you have an operating system in order to manage your IoT device better. You have a cloud solution uh, that can be used to push not only applications, but also updates to your IoT device. And you have uh, an app that can be white labeled by manufacturers, for example, uh, and can be used for several things. So how do they work together? Um, well, the, the app can control these the product let's say a washing machine or any kind of product directly uh, it's peer-to-peer -peer connection it's very secure um, and on the operating system it's meant to have a lot of containers that host different kind of applications and the cloud uh, is meant to uh, push new applications onto the device so like it's a, a symbiosis of applications uh, partly edge and partly cloud but the whole system, I think this is the most important part. If you disconnect the internet, it still continues working. So in terms of operation, it's completely independent from the And internet. what do you mean by that? If you cut off the internet, it's still, uh, it's still working? What do you mean? Well, the Nymea, if, if you open, or if you put your phone into flight mode and you open the camera app, it's still working, right? So ah, for the most, the most important applications are edge applications okay so you say the operating system and the application on the bottom they they keep working even when you disconnect from the internet exactly yeah yes and uh, what i find uh, uh, refreshing or even new in the market maybe is that you have an operating system that you can use in order to open up an existing iot device and do more with it so that is really interesting um, yeah, true. Um, the, the big vision is to have an app store for IoT devices, right? So we know the Tesla car and we know smart TVs and we know the Amazon Echo Dot. So it's, it's, I think in five years, it's very common and very usual that one device is software defined. So it can host different applications. And yeah, so, so just to, uh, to give a very simple example, if I today buy, for example, a camera, which can be connected to the internet, then it, it's, it can be seen as an IoT device, but with the operating system of NIMEA, I will be able to even upgrade the security systems on it and maybe use it for more purposes, right? Exactly, yeah. So it becomes a general purpose computer if you want, so it can do a lot of cool stuff then. Uh, that is really new, I think. Uh, so it sounds all fantastic, but... Uh, Simon, as we all know, we see an increased number of IoT devices in the market. The predictions um, increase almost every week. So today they even say we will have uh, 30 billion of IoT devices in the market. Uh, that sounds fantastic, but we also see some problems in there, aren't we? Yeah, exactly. I think IoT Hall of Shame, it's a website. It puts it straight forward. Uh, we have a lot of IoT stuff out there like LP cams and stuff that are easily hacked because they are basically not secure. So we need a huge quality, a shift in quality. 
and in the approach how we do IoT in general. So nowadays, it's quite uh, difficult to build IoT, it's quite costly, um, but this will change through these evolving platforms. Right. And, uh, and you see, uh, you summarize, I asked you what problems do you see in the market? What is causing these problems that we saw in the hall uh, of shame? And you said there are basically three problems. Can you explain, please? Sure. Uh, time to market is simple. Uh, IoT is complex tech, so there's a lot of tech. Mostly you run into a lot of problems and at the end you spend millions. Uh, so it's, it's a valid, validated tech when you use a platform that's already out in the market. So you can cut off this one. Security is an extremely nice issue. Even though if you had nice architecture and you have keys everywhere, that doesn't mean that device is secure because the internet is quite, uh, it's evolving very fast and with the internet. So it needs constant updates, kernel updates, application updates. It has to grow with the internet. Uh, so it has to be fed by uh, updates constantly. And we have the interdependency issue, which means mostly IoT is an isolated application and it does not really interact with the world. But that's the original idea of IoT, right? What do you mean by that? I don't understand. Um, we have a world full of products that are accessible with an API. Yes. So actually we have everything in place to control a lot of stuff. But like uh, a machine have to learn each other language, each, each other language. So uh, human need to speak the same language in order to interact and have some common value and, and devices or products or machines need to do the same. So they need to speak the same language first and then they can be a valuable exactly. um, so, system. So you say time to market is difficult at the moment because uh, IoT is a complex topic. Um, mm -hmm. uh, security by um, uh, limiting the access to a prefab IoT device, you are often not able to upgrade to the latest security patches and the interdependency since every IoT device is manufactured by another manufacturer, it's difficult to have them talking to each other. So um, yeah, the main IoT problem we want to discuss today is how can you get value out of them? Hmm. So I claim something, IoT has no value. It's, IoT means connection of machines, right? Also internet, so internet of things, internet has no value. It's, let, let me put it like a set of cables, virtual cables. Yeah. Uh, what has value if two parties interact with each other on an application, right? Like sending an email, this is value because it's information exchange. And we have to get rid of the thinking that IoT already is a valuable stuff. So once we have done, we have solved the interdependency issue, we made uh, things talk to each other, we can think about how, what, what do they do with each other? Um, and mostly nowadays, we stop thinking at that point. Um, and I think some of my, well, the app store is a good example, or some of you might know if this, then that. So these are um, application spaces uh, on top of IoT then. So, I think the future will be that products will interact with applications that run on the devices. The products will interact with applications. It's quite a statement to say that IoT is uh, actually, yeah, sort of container, more trend item to say. Um, so uh, having said all of this, so we now know you have an operating system to offer. Uh, you can even run a service in the cloud that can update uh, the IoT device remotely. Uh, you have an app that can be wide labeled and can be used by certain parties. But how can this all be uh, married together and turn an IoT device into a revenue generating device? I mm. heard you have uh, some experience in that. Can you explain? Sure. Um, all the thoughts that we have or the ideas, uh, of course, we have to we had to learn a lot 
uh, and we spend a lot of money on different things. Uh, actually, we got the idea of an OS for products um, when we did an IoT product. So it was this Google Nest similar device, a smart light switch, and we tried to make it. We made it to the prototype stadium and we invested quite something, a lot of time and money. Um, but we didn't really succeed to make it a, a mass product. Um, and after we stopped that project, um, I would not say it failed because it's still a nice idea, but we stopped the project because of a series of issues. And then we said, okay, when it's so hard to make IoT, then let's take what we have. We have done a lot of software for this stuff. And we made it, uh, like we turned it in the shape that everyone can use. And then the idea of IoT OS evolved. So to put it more practical, the idea evolved out of suffering. <laughs> <laughs> well, it's good that you learned from the experiences that you had. Uh, well, yeah, if you look at the market since you started, there have been an incredibly amount of changes in the market. And what we see overall is that uh, data uh, is sometimes they say data is the new oil or the new gold. And uh, especially the big tech companies seem to benefit from it. So can you tell us a little bit what your view is on it? Yeah, sure. Nowadays, hardware manufacturers have the issue that they don't have contact to the end user of their product. They don't know anything about them. So you have the distribution channels. Let's say you sell a garage door uh, because this is a real example and you have your distribution channels and then you somehow someone unpacks the system and installs it, integrates it into the house, but they don't know who um, is using it all the time. And what happens today is um, that hardware or the assets uh, are produced on the one side, like here we have this manufacturing stuff and the consumer, the end user is on the other side. And mostly big companies, uh, mostly US, they are very good in it. They sit somewhere in between. So for example, the car is made into digital money by Uber. The flat or the house is turned into a digital model by Airbnb. And that's what, because those guys have the end user access and they are the, the layer where digital business happens. And I think yeah. if you distribute a lot of hardware stuff, it's a cool um, starting point to get access to the customer because these are your users. So actually what you're saying, uh, as I understand it correctly, is the manufacturers, for example, a garage door, they deliver a product that can be connected to the internet and then they lose contact with their end users. Exactly. So this is what you're saying actually, right? It's this is the, you lose the link somewhere or very early actually. Yeah. But they, let's say you sell 100,000 garage doors. Imagine you make a smartphone app, whatever, a game that has 100,000 users. That would be quite a number. Yeah, it would be interesting to have contact with your end user. And what you're actually saying is um, this can be done better and it can be done by using your NIMEA products and services. Is that correct? Yeah, well, having an OS or you can also say make a smartphone out, out of your product. So it has the same capabilities. It then is enabled to deliver a huge variety of services. And that's the fundamental uh, need um, to establish a new consumer, a customer retention, a consumer relation. Yeah, so maybe you can walk us through the steps. So uh, just take this example as of the garage door. Uh, mm -hmm. We can maybe install an operating system on, that, uh, on the software of the garage door. And what else can we do? How does it work? Yeah, so first of all, you have the benefits of an IoT system, like you know what's going on. You have more insights, you know how it is used, so you can improve your product, you can do this predictive maintenance stuff. Uh, but the cool thing is once you have uh, a customer relationship, 
mostly it's just a simple app that is meant to control the product. You have a channel to the customer, so you can talk to them and you can offer a new service. Uh, in the case of the garage door, it, there is one use case that I love and I will show it to you later as well. If uh, a delivery service, the post delivery service uh, delivers a parcel, they get, uh, they are allowed to put the parcel into the garage, right? And this costs something. If you have a new service like this, you can inform the consumer about this new service. And they just have to accept yes or no, like it or not. It's an in-app purchase at the end. So, and that is all possible because you um, open up uh, the, the, the device of the manufacturer to the end user. So there's no platform in between. Exactly. You can, you can see your products as computers and your computers deliver value to your consumers. Yeah. Directly, right? Mm -hmm. So this is all very cool. Um, let's go through some real, real life experiences. Yeah, exactly. So this is an, an actual use case. On the left side, it's the P2P. So it's our service. Our um, customers, they are um, SME to big corporates. They have access to their devices in the field. They can update them and they can install new services. So um, they are in control on which kind of services run on their products. And on the right side, this is a customer project. Uh, this is meant to be a service app. So again, for the garage door uh, example, service technicians have access to their customer doors so they can see uh, what's wrong. They can make a route, like a service route, and plan all the stuff. And they can take all the right stuff with them. And this platform, for example, is the end user in that case is the service guy. Uh, and they can configure or read some data from the drive so they have so easier what life. So what you're saying is by installing your operating system using your cloud service and adding on top of it a white labeled app so the app can be uh, made according to the manufacturer's house style let's say uh, mm -hmm. you can have better access to the end user be it uh, um, a maintenance guy or a real end user. Mm -hmm. That's all fantastic. So you also told me about this situation, the Marantic case. Yeah, it's actually this garage door thing. Yeah. So in that case, on the left side, you see the end user app. It's a simple app. It can open and close garage doors. So it's, uh, it's not a big thing. You install it and you use it once in a while, right? But it's now uh, very nice stuff. It's now the direct link to your end users once they've installed it. And on the previous example, we had a different app, uh, which has more information on the drives for the service guys. And on this um, example, it's meant for the end user. So very simple. Right. And on the right side, I put this DHLs uh, or post delivery service example, because this is a working uh, use case. So it actually generates real cash. Already. So the Marantech has um, better revenue by installing the Nymea software, is that what you're saying? Exactly. They have a link to their end users and the end users actually pay cash for an additional service. So ah. they sell hardware and they have software service as well. Yeah. Yeah. So on top of the garage that they sell, they sell additional services and they can do that through the software that Nymea is delivering. Is that correct? Exactly. Yeah. So you also have other use cases. You told me about this one as well. Can you explain the audience a little bit? Sure. Uh, it's a more complex one, but the, at the end, the idea is very similar. We have a lot of uh, private garages uh, or parking lots uh, in, in urban areas, in cities. And it's much easier to install um, charging infrastructure in private area. It's easy to install a wall box. It costs you, let's say, two or three thousand euro uh, instead of investing 20, 30, or 50,000 for charging infrastructure. Mm -hmm. So we made kind of an Airbnb for private garages in order to enable everyone, the public uh, space, to charge the cars in private infrastructure. So that's again another model uh, in order to gain more, to uh, have a higher revenue 
uh, based on your current equipment and the, the available assets. Same Very tech, good. quite some money, yeah. Yes, and uh, so there was a, a, even a third use case. Well, there are more, but we wanted to present these three use cases, right? So what can you yeah. tell me about this one? This one is maybe someone from the energy sector is here. Uh, this one is about the problem that if you have a, a photovoltaic system on a multi-party house, on a big house, it's difficult to uh, account the benefit, like the energy that is uh, generated to the tenants of the house with some blockchain technology and some IoT, uh, it becomes possible. So let's see the like big Excel sheet that distributes costs or benefits of the PV system on the shared house. Okay. Well, these are all very interesting use cases. Uh, I hope it was clear to the audience what the products and services of NIMEA can offer. Um, this was uh, the webinar about the NIMEA products and services. It is the first one. Um, the, the next event will be a round table that we will host here in Startup Bootcamp Amsterdam on August 31st. And during that event, during that round table, we will discuss with you uh, what the software of NIMEA could mean to your business. So you can reach out to us or keep an eye on the social media where we announce the roundtables and uh, hope to see you back.